This is lesson 9-1, quadratic graphs and their properties. Let's review some basic vocabulary for a quadratic function. First off, a quadratic function is a function that can be written in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is also standard form of a quadratic, a quadratic function. The polynomial is of degree 2. The value of a in the function cannot be equal to 0. And we can also use function notation, meaning that we can use f of x for this instead of using y. The parent function of quadratics is y equals x squared. That's going to be important to know as we start to graph. The graph of any quadratic function is called a parabola. Here are some basics about parabolas. First of all, they are considered to be curves, not lines. The graphs of parabolas are either smile-shaped or frown-shaped. That's not U-shaped and N-shaped. It's smile-shaped and frown-shaped. The reason I do it that way is because if the value of a in the function is greater than zero, meaning it's positive, the parabola will be smile-shaped. Think about when you smile. It's when things are going positively. The parabola will be frown-shaped when the value of a is negative. When things are going negative for you, you're frowning. Parabolas are vertically symmetrical. That means I can draw a line down the middle vertically and I can cut the parabola directly in half and the sides would match each other exactly. There are three major parts to any parabola. The first is the axis of symmetry and that's the line that divides the parabola exactly in half as we just spoke about with vertical symmetry. The vertex is the high point or the low point on the parabola. It can also be called the turning point. We determine if it's a high point or a low point depending on if the parabola is smile shaped or frown shaped. If you have a smile parabola, it's a low point. If you have a frowning parabola, it's a high point. Finally, zeros or roots are where the parabola intersects the x-axis if it intersects the x-axis at all. Let's talk about minimums and maximums. The vertex of your parabola will always be located on your axis of symmetry. The vertex can take two, one of the two forms. It's either a minimum, meaning it's the low point of the parabola, and as we said before, that means the parabola is smile-shaped. If it's a maximum, the parabola is frown-shaped and it's the high point. Let's take a look at an example of identifying a vertex. Look at each picture and identify the vertex. Then, identify if it's a minimum or a maximum. Pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to do this on your own. For the red parabola, the vertex is 1, 2, and because it's a smiling parabola, it's a minimum point. For the blue one, the vertex is 2, 1, and because it's a frowning parabola, that means it is a maximum point. Let's talk about graphing parabolas in the form of y equals ax squared. The first thing you should do is make a table of values. Remember that you can choose your values for x, and you should choose values that make your y values easy to graph. Then graph your points. And then you should reflect your points over the y-axis. In this case, when you have y equals ax squared, the y-axis 
is the axis of symmetry. Connect the dots in a curve format. And identify your domain and range if necessary. Here's a graphing example. Pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to do it on your own. I have shown you what a table should look like. Now let's take a look at how to graph this. I have my graph to the right. I'm first going to plot the point 0, 0, right in the middle of my graph. Then, since it's easy, I plot 3, 3. I tried the values of 1 and 2, but it did not come out very easily. The next value that came out easily was 6, 12. So I go over to 6, and my graph needs to be extended a little bit. I'll roughly put it right up here. Now, the next thing to do is to reflect my points across the y-axis. Since 0, 0 is right on the y-axis, there's no need for reflection. Now I'll reflect the point 3, 3. I'm going to put that point in blue. When I reflect it across the y-axis, it's going to be negative 3, 3. When I reflect the point 6, 12 across the y-axis, it's going to be negative 6, 12. At this point, then, I want to connect my dots in a curved fashion, like so. Remembering 0, 0 is my minimum point, and I'll turn and go back up. Since the graph is continuous, I do want to put arrowheads on both sides. And then, of course, I do want to label my graph. Let's talk about breaking down standard form. Recall that standard form of any quadratic function is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The a value determines two things. As we've discussed before, if the parabola is smile shaped, that means we have a positive a value. If it's frown shaped, we have a negative a value. The width of the parabola is also determined by a. As the absolute value of a increases, the parabola gets more narrow. For example, y equals 1 half x squared is wider than y equals 2x squared. And y equals 2x squared would be wider than y equals 3x squared. The value of b is going to affect the positioning of your axis of symmetry, meaning it's going to move the parabola left and right. The value of C affects your position of the vertex, meaning it will move your parabola up and down. Here's an example. How is the graph of f of x equals 2x squared plus 3 different from the graph of f of x equals 2x squared? Pause the video at this point to see if you can come up with a description. When we take a look at doing a table for both, you can see that each time we go from 2x squared to 2x squared plus 3, the graph moves up three values. Therefore, to describe this graph, the graph moves up three units up the y-axis. Let's take a look at a word problem example. An acorn drops from a tree branch that is 20 feet above the ground. The function f of t equals negative 16t squared plus 20 gives the height f of t of the acorn after t seconds. At about what time does the acorn hit? The key word in that word problem is the word about. It means we're not looking for an exact. Pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to try it on your own. So 
So maybe before you start, you should have thought about a reasonable domain. Thinking about the fact that my domain has to deal with time, it makes no sense whatsoever for me to have negative time. The reasonable domain then would be to start at zero. I'll go up by half a second each time to get a value. Here's my chart. When time equals zero, the acorn is 20 feet above the ground. At time equals a half, it's at 16 feet above the ground. When one second is reached, it's four feet above the ground. And when I get to 1.5 seconds, it is now gone down to negative 16 feet. Well, that would mean that it fell through the ground. So obviously at some point, it hit zero feet, which means it hit the ground. Negative height in this case does not make any sense. Therefore, we can say the ground hits, we can see the acorn hits the ground at zero feet just after one second. If you're having any issues with this particular lesson, please make sure you consult your teacher in class.